No, wait, hold All on. Right. What is going on, uh, guys? Uh, Welcome back to another episode of the Income Athletics. No, the Natty Roundtable podcast. Faked you out there. Thought you were uh, watching the Income Athletics podcast, but not because it's us three chilling. Connor, James, myself, this is the first time watching. Um, thank you for tuning in. If you're tuning in again, thank you as well. Um, but today, I think, is going to be a great episode for you guys. We're going to be talking about something probably a lot of you have wondered about at any point in your in your lifting career, maybe even right now since it's going into winter, how to calculate your calories or how to just go about a bulk or a cut. So I think this is something that a lot of these guys, both these fellows here, have probably gotten asked a lot about, myself included. Um, so we're just going to go over it from our perspective, what we like to do maybe for ourselves, for our clients, kind of go into, into detail about things and give you some, hopefully some take home information that you can apply um, and maybe even change a little bit of what you're already doing if you have a sort of a protocol to go about a cut or a bulk. So um, yeah, so I'll kind of get into it there and, and really, like I said, get a little bit of perspective from each of these guys. So um, when you guys want to start it out here, either way. I'll go ahead and I'll put my little prefix in there. Um, yeah, okay. So totally. one thing when it comes to uh, bulking, cutting, uh, we all typically learn about when it comes to standardized nutrition uh a lot of times we learn that the you know the average for somebody is like 1800 calories 2000 calories something like that and so a good amount of the time people who know that information that that's kind of the average that norm they believe that's how everybody is and that's not the truth um in fact i was just telling these guys before we started this that i personally had somebody where their maintenance caloric intake, which means they don't necessarily gain weight, but don't necessarily drop weight or anything, it kind of is their steady state, um, was around 1,000 calories. Um, so, you know, it, and it, it's all different. I got one guy who competes for me who, uh, if, we'll talk about cutting right now. I have one guy who competes for me who he cuts on, I think it's a... Uh, 3,400 calories, so 3,400 calories, and then I might cut on 1,800, 1,700 calories. Um, and then one of my other guy, uh, he'll do 1,500, and then I had, uh, I might have a girl who cuts on 2,000. Everybody's going to be different. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing to get out of the way, is yeah. that there's not one clear cut number that everybody just starts at. So you can't just assume that your your uh, baseline will go ahead and say your maintenance is 2,000 right away. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the biggest mistake. Um, the way that I do it when uh, it comes to uh, clients, athletes, anything like that, is I have them track all their food for a week. Uh, we do it through my fitness pal. Again, it's just one of those simple tools that you can use. Uh, have them track their uh, track what if they work out that day, um, and then track their weight every morning before they eat, go to the restroom, anything like that. Uh, so that way, it's kind of more true weight is what I go ahead and call it. Um, if they don't have anything in their system, it's not halfway through the day or not anything. And then they haven't worked out anything like that. Um, through that, usually I can start seeing a pattern based on what they've eaten because that's one of the biggest things is don't change what you've done. Just eat the same way because I don't want it to skew these results in any way. I just want to see what it looks like. Uh, so you might have one day where a person eats, we'll just say, for sake of things, somebody eats the 2,000 calories, and then the next day they're at 2,200, and then next is 1,800, and then it's 2,500. And eventually you'll start seeing a pattern within that week of, uh, okay, this is where they're starting to gain weight. This is starting where they're drop. Did they, were they active that day? Did they work out? Did they not work out? Uh, just simple little things like that is personally how I will end up trying to figure somebody's uh, maintenance level out or baseline out. Um, there are other ways that you can do it too. Uh, in fact, I know if you go on, and again, this is one of those things, everybody's different. I'm sure that somebody watching has gone to bodybuilding.com 
and they have a little calculator that calculates, oh, how much you should eat for bulk or how much you should eat for cut or maintain. But that's not taking into account that, again, everybody's body is different. So for some, for some, uh, someone who might put those numbers in on bodybuilding.com, it might be exact just by chance. Like it might be what they need, but somebody else that might be way off, like uh, it might tell them to eat 1,800 calories to cut, but this person has a slower metabolism and now they're going to gain weight instead of cut weight, you know? Um, but yeah, I think for me, that's kind of the base thing that I wanted to put out there just was that everybody's different. There is no clear cut number that everybody will start from. And that's, yeah. that's the biggest piece of information I want people to know. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And really the only kind of like difference I, I think I would say, um, kind of the way I go about things is I do like to explain that to people right off the bat when they're starting out with me that we aren't just going to be able to give you this pinpoint number and stick with it for the whole time that we're working together. Um, but I do kind of use some sort of a formula um, based off of a few variables to figure out that baseline number. So I do, I basically do the two week, I think um, like in the muscle and strength pyramids, they talk about the two week, uh, or I guess it'd be the nutrition pyramids. Um, they talk about the two week sort of finding that maintenance, kind of exactly what you were talking about, Connor, which I think is the most accurate way to do it because mm -hmm. that's the only way you're, you're looking at the proof in the pudding. But I think, especially with a lot of my general population clients, they're like, if I told them just to track their food and they were like, I don't even have a goal, they'd be like, what the heck? You know? So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. that's where if you can get someone to fully come around and just be like, Hey, like, let's, let's just track and, and get after it. I think that's great. Um, and it works really well. It's like the best way to go about it. But what I do a lot of times is I do that without them really even knowing it. So yeah. I will give them based on, like I said, a few variables. So what their job is, how active they are, what their need is for the day, um, how they're like hard labor or sedentary. Um, and then from there, I'll usually go, usually kind of the rough numbers I'll do is just literally multiply between 10 and kind of 13 based on literally where they are in those things, like activity levels and based on their body weight, just roughly. And then I'll, uh, that would be someone trying to cut, trying to lose weight between those three numbers. And that's obviously a large spectrum there multiplying three basically different numbers by their body weight but it gives me that rough estimate and then kind of so on from there if they're trying to ma maintain or just hang around where they are maybe like between 13 and 16 and then someone who's kind of bulking obviously going a little bit higher there but then again I wait to see how that first week goes see how the first couple days even go and then make assessments accordingly for that next week and then see how things go but yeah I'd say after two weeks you always kind of have a good baseline sort of knowledge of their weigh-ins and then kind of comparing that over to the the calories themselves um i think that is huge but yeah that's really the big thing that i kind of go about it and and i also like to stress um that it, it might change i mean might stay the exact same um but like you said connor it's tough with the calculators because a lot of times if you, if you just did that and you didn't have a coach to kind of monitor that progress you might like for me definitely 100%. If I plugged my numbers in, my like my maintenance level of calories would have me losing weight 100%. Mm -hmm. Like I would be totally losing weight. So it's like that's where you definitely have to take those kind of with a grain of salt. Maybe a good baseline, but know that you probably are going to have to make adjustments accordingly. But the one thing I kind of want to sum up is I always really stress the fact that, especially for my general population, since it's that sustainability mindset. We never really want to go too far on either end of the spectrum of deep into a surplus or deep into a deficit. And by that, I mean too drastic of either end of the spectrum. So, like, I kind of, I'm always like, we want to hang right around that little bit of a surplus. I mean, yeah, yeah. you don't be like just hanging around maintenance and, and, and kind of like not getting the results you could be from putting on a little bit of body fat and helping yourself. But the same thing goes with the with the uh with the deficit you don't want to be too drastic with it too soon where you're losing muscle or feeling those negative negative effects feeling um, shitty you, you guys feel no matter what which the yeah. natural body community feels no matter what but you don't want to be feeling two weeks into a diet you know so mm -hmm. um, but yeah that's otherwise i totally agree i think it's it's a trial and error process and learning yourself or having your coach help you learn so um yeah. but james yeah so building off of what you guys said Oh no! Oh no! This is oh, no. it's okay. He's gonna have to read. He's gonna have to redo it. He's yeah. gonna be mad. This is like comical. People are watching this, laughing right now. They're like, 
They didn't even know. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. Give me a thumbs okay. back. Here we go. Nice. Yep. Three down. Good. We're doing All commentary right. open. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So to build off what you guys said, I've used the journals before. I think that's a really good tool for the general population, mainly because it makes them actually see what they're doing. Like if you're not writing it down and looking at it, you kind of, you're just like, oh. You've used the journals before. That was like the last thing. And then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes them like really see what they're doing and see the small variations that they're adding in, like the extra handful of peanuts or whatever. And then like they put on, you know, condiments on here and like those small little things start to add up. And that's where they see, OK, now I'm 300 calories over where I was supposed to be. So that's where the journal to me is really helpful for people that aren't very aware of what they're putting into them. Um, I've also used the ranges. I, I think that's an estimate like you do, Joe. Yep. Yeah. No, you're good. Yep. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, but again, it, it is an estimate and everything we do is going to be an estimate. And like you said, I do that like in the, the write up that I do for my nutritional stuff. That's like the first line. It's like, these are numbers that we will use for now, but these are not the baseline. Exactly. Not your um, and then the reason that I think it's so variable and you guys hit on it but didn't explain like the detail of it was everyone burns more calories because everyone's lifestyle is different and everyone's that, like, the muscle yep. mass is different yeah that too. so you've metabolism, got, you got bmr yep exactly i mean you've got to look at a 200 pound person with 15 percent body fat and a 200 pound person with 25 percent body fat they don't need the same calories and that's something especially for competitors i always tell them never compare your calories to other people because you don't know what they're doing. You don't like, they don't know what you're doing. You could walk to work 15 minutes every day. And there's mm -hmm. how many more steps than that person who, you know, takes the bus or whatever. Or you see these people that are like, oh, I'm eating 4,500 calories. Well, congrats. You're also doing, oh, you got, a, you got two competitors, you know, you know, one's bragging about, oh, I'm eating 4,500 calories. And the other's like, oh shit, what's my coach doing? I'm only eating 2000 calories. Like, what's the difference here? But when you look at it, you got the 4,500 calorie guy doing seven days of cardio a week. So, I mean, you got to look at all the variables put together. It's not just the calories. It's about the activity, what your work is, because if you're doing a very physical job, that's going to, like, eat into those calories and all that. Um, so, yeah, I, I tell people to never compare their calories person to person. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the, the tracking front, I love the journals. But also the, the weigh-ins, I think, are a very important key to it. And I do it just like Connor does it, where I tell them to weigh themselves every single morning at the same time, because that's going to give me more data. And if we know we're already using estimations. I want to take out as much variability as possible in these okay. estimations. So the more data I have, the better my averages can be. So measure as much. And again, with even just the tracking, it's great to say I'm tracking my calories. It's great to do a journal. But if you're not diligent with it and if you're not accurate with it, it's not going to matter. Like writing stuff down, oh, I'll just leave off this three tablespoons of ketchup. You know, that's just an example. But like that shit adds up. And yeah. your estimations are going to get are going to be pointless if you're not tracking every little thing especially for a competitor general population you know you're gonna make progress and it's less of a timetable but if we're like 16 weeks out and we need to get you peeled like i need to know every calorie that's going in your body mm -hmm. so yeah it, it really comes down to just how diligent you are with whatever process you're using yeah um as for the formulas i know there's like ten thousand different formulas out there i forget the name of the one i use um but what I'll say is find one if you're going to use an online calculator that takes into account as many variables as possible. Again, so that you have the most accurate estimate estimation as possible. So there's some that just do height and weight. Those aren't going to be as like as precise as one that uses height, weight and gender, because we know males and females have different calorie requirements. And then if you can add on top one that considers body fat, Again, we know that someone who has a high percentage body fat is going to have different caloric needs than someone with a low percentage body fat. So, and I know there are some out there that it's height, weight, gender, body fat, and then it spits out a number for you on top of including an activity factor, which is kind of like the key thing in there, that last little bit. So pick a good formula. And then 
kind of just if I were to give random numbers so people feel like they're walking away with something that they can use right now, when I'm picking calorie needs for someone, write this down. My protein, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> zero, zero point eight to one point two grams per pound body weight, and I know there's a lot of contention about what the exact number is, whatever. Normally, I end up going with one gram per pound because that just works for most people. Um, fat, I like to keep at 25% of total calories. So that's not like a, a per gram per pound thing. It's just 25% of however much I'm going to be giving them. Uh, and normally, I'll keep it no lower than like 40 to 45 grams of fat. I found that that's pretty sustainable. People can do that. You have to be smart about what you're eating to do that. But also, you don't get a lot of the hormonal problems that you do if you drop it any below that. Like, I feel like that's a pretty solid uh, minimum, like, boundary there. And then carbs just kind of fill out the rest of that. So they're just the fuel source and filler, really, in my, in my mind. James, to play devil ad, ad, devil's advocate with you with the formula thing, what would you say about someone who maybe, like, is like, okay, I'm going to do the calculator. Obviously, they probably know their height and weight pretty accurately, but, like, they're like, oh yeah, dude, I'm 5% body fat. And then they plug that in and then they're like, my knee, like I work out hard every day for two hours. Like my knee's probably at like 4,000. Like, would you, would you recommend someone just if they didn't have an accurate measure? Cause honestly, I don't really know my body fat. Like, what would you say then just maybe ditch the calculator altogether or use it and then go to what we're recommending. But I just wanted to throw that in there. Cause I knew there'd be some guys who are like, yeah, 4%. I walk around. Yeah, I mean you have to be you have to be realistic with yourself. I see people on the internet all the time. They're like, "Yeah, I I got the three percent," and it's just like, "No, you didn't. You'd be dead. Mm-hmm. You'd be winning the the uh, pro shows." On yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, be realistic with yourself. Like you're not. It's not a bragging contest, you know. Like when you're doing these calculators, you're not helping yourself by like using your ego in it. Accuracy. Um. Key. Yeah. And then it all comes back to, okay, you have your number. We'll use it and see what happens. Kind of like what you guys were saying. Like use it for a week, two weeks, figure out the weekly average. Am I up half a pound over last week? Am I down? Whatever. Um, Because that's really what it comes down to. It's just watching it and being consistent with everything to the point where you can take out some of that variation and figure out the overall trend. So, yeah. I totally agree. uh, I'd say, uh, I mean, here you can – Anybody watching can see we got three different people who do it three different ways, but in the end, you can end up making it work. So there's also not one specific way you would have to do it. Um, I mean, is there one that works better than the other? One could say that there is, uh, you know, more accurate, anything like that. Um, but altogether, just in, in some, Just make sure that you have some, if you are having someone do it, have, make sure that you have someone who's knowledgeable about it, uh, has some sort of experience with it. Um, and actually one of the points that I had written down, uh, we were talking about telling, you know, talking about weights and, uh, weighing every day and whatnot. If for some reason, the person who is coaching you or helping you isn't checking in to see what your weight is, make sure you tell them. Uh, so that way they know, and that way they can correct those numbers if they need to. An example of this, um, there was a kid who goes to the same gym that I do every once in Blue Moon. And uh, we, we were just in the sauna one day, and he started asking me about cutting and, and everything. I started giving him just a little bit of basic information. And he was like, well, I got my uh, like sister's boyfriend or fiance or something is helping me and he has the best yeah and because he lifts weights and he took one class the armchair quarterback yeah and uh yeah and that's actually what he said he said (laughs) well he lifts weights and he took a class on health because i remember asking what was his major and it was like like a business major how many people has he helped like Yeah, yeah yeah anyway um and so I start digging into this, and I find out, well, this kid's supposed to be on a cut, and he's gained 15 pounds in, like, two weeks. and But he hasn't said anything to the guy, and I was like, one, 
is say something to the guy. Yeah, you're not <laughs> two, on a cut. <laughs> yeah, you're not a cut. And then I said, and two, you know, this is when you want to make sure that you have someone who is knowledgeable. I mean, the biggest, I will say the biggest flaw on his part is as he started gaining weight, he should have said something. Said something, yeah. Cause, but cause, nonetheless, he should be checking in like, hey, how's he it going, sh- dude? He like, should be. I mean, 15 pounds, like in <laughs> two weeks? Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah, it was two like, weeks. You probably, That's like, a lot. I don't care how much muscle you're <laughs> Like you're ready to uh to throw on your frame. Yeah. That's gonna be a lot of weight. It was a lot. Time. And uh, I mean, we'll go <laughs> ahead and this in this moment, yeah. In He's this like, moment, I gotta this out. <laughs> we'll we'll give this we'll give this coach a benefit of a doubt, and we'll just yep. say, well, he was on the basic his package. Client, his his client should have checked in, or yeah. again. The coach should have checked that. Um, he's on the monthly check-in package, so he well, didn't get and actually, check-in. no, 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 that's another thing. That's another thing that he um, uh, brought up, another thing that he did. He was telling me what he was having him eat. And, of course, he yeah. was telling him to eat all this, yeah, all this yeah. food that people see as clean food. Um, I remember he, he mentioned a lot of... Uh, a lot, a lot of uh, one of the greens. I can't think of which green it was. Just, but I mean, overall, what people see as healthy food, and that's another thing when it comes to this calorie bulk and cutting. What people think is, well, if I just eat healthy foods, I'm going to lose weight. You can eat all the healthy food you want, but if you're still over this maintenance level, this baseline that we keep talking about, you're going to gain weight. Yep. You know, if you're if you're not, especially if you're not exercising or doing something to. Uh, kind of even everything out. Combat or, the, yeah, with some yeah, caloric expenditure. Uh, yeah. yeah, so in this case, you know, this girlfriend's boyfriend or whoever <laughs> was, he had the, uh, he, 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 he uh, how's the way I want to say this? He wanted to help. He just didn't either one, I'm sure he must have not tracked anything. I'm positive of that. He didn't track anything like what we were talking about. Um, he knew, he knew. okay, well, healthy foods, this is probably going to help with this kind of thing. And, uh, but, yeah, I think I think what I'm getting at is he wanted to help, which is always a good thing. If I mean, if you're searching to help people, that's completely fine. But know your uh, place. Yeah, but know, make <laughs> sure you know what at least a good baseline of what you're talking about yeah. um you know i i'm not gonna go and talk to somebody about how to invest in stocks because i don't do that you know totally or agree. if i knew a tiny tiny bit about it like oh yeah you want to uh, i mean like a basic stock uh uh Get strategy most people know yeah <laughs> like like buy it when it's low at yeah. the lowest point of the sell season it when and then sell yeah, it when like, it's high i um, know that yeah yeah i know that much but i don't know anything else yeah you know no, I, I don't know how to pr- predict how this stuff is going to change or anything like that or at least so. preface by preface yourself by saying that like be like hey i really yeah. don't know that much but i do know you oh. might want to start eating yeah, ex- yeah like but just know i'm not a genius when it comes to this yeah, yeah. No, I totally yeah. agree. Don't go in thinking, like, letting someone think that you're, like, an expert, and then you're just like, yeah. uh, yeah. No, yeah, I totally agree. We're, we're like, uh, I mean, granted, this is more of a, a friendship thing and everything like that, and I'm sure we've all probably had some sort of experience with this. When you first start lifting, and you want someone to help you, and I've seen this multiple times, too, and they ask their friend who's been lifting for, like, three months to help them, well, that friend still has a lot to learn, mm-hmm. um, but they but they know that person. They have they and have they a feed off of one another. It's a bad exactly. thing. <laughs> and, and so they you know they will choose that person over a stranger, which I completely understand. You know, you have a relationship, you have a bond with this person. Um, but again, it's one of those things. Make sure you you know you you can do that. Just make sure you might have this backup plan just in case. Uh, because they could be saying stuff that's right, or they could be saying stuff that's completely wrong. Inform and yourself. If, yeah. Yeah, and especially if they're newer to it, whether it's workout or nutrition, anything like that. Like I said, they could by chance hit the point, you know, hit it, nail on the head, get it 
exactly right, or they might be completely wrong or somewhere in the middle. Uh, kind of like, I mean, kind of like with the healthy food. Uh, and when I say healthy food, I mean like low calorie food. So we'll just say like veggies, chicken, stuff like that. Um, somebody might know, well, typically if I want to, if somebody wants to lose weight, they're going to be eating these foods. So I'm going to have people eat these foods, but then they aren't aware of the, well, you can still gain weight. You know, okay. And and also you could mess with someone's psyche too if you're like no you got to eat these foods only and then they're like all of a sudden deprived 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 yeah, like yeah. creating a horrible relationship with food where it's like no you should have these as a baseline just so you can live and feel good and and live a long time but yeah. you can still eat foods that you like too because I think that's, that's gonna have a it's also gonna have an effect on your health too mentally stress uh, levels you're like oh my god crap. I can't eat that over there like try doing that for ten years like yeah. you can imagine the stress level is gonna be a little higher yeah. you know so yeah. have a piece of chocolate yeah. you might calm down a little bit you know or when yeah when you do mess up eventually it's gonna be like the end of the world if you don't have an understanding that like yeah. okay I just ate an extra 150 calories so freaking yeah. what exactly like, yeah it yeah. might be drastic you might binge a ton and you might like psychologically you're gonna be like oh my god I totally screwed myself over like. I'm done. Like, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Or, or you'll have that situation, which I think we touched on this in another episode, where somebody might, we'll just say, uh, like James was saying, you go over your caloric uh, maintenance level or whatever you might have been given, and now you gain, we'll say, two, two, three pounds over a day going into the next day because of, uh, because you were in a surplus and then all that food is stored inside you and whatnot. Water, yep, and water people are going to freak out because yep. they think now it's just ruined. It's mm-hmm. like, no, it's not. I mean, yeah, that puts you slightly off track, but it's going to go back and you're going to be fine. You know? yeah. uh, but if you have somebody who isn't aware of that, uh, we'll just say a coach this uh in this example, who isn't aware of that, they might be like, oh, shit, this person just gained three pounds overnight. Cut them even more, <laughs> yeah, you know, or so something true. like that. That is and, so true, rather than just don't need the to. course. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. well, you guys have anything else you want to add to that, or is that uh, – I think that was solid. I think that was a lot of good yeah, info. Yeah, no. Uh, I, think, I, think we got I, think, I think I'm good. James, you got anything? Pause I think – I was going to say, I think he just said – I think we covered it. No, it's pretty well handled. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you guys um, taking the time to, to make this happen. I think, like I said, this is a lot of good info for a lot of people to be able to utilize and directly apply. Got to drink that, drink that drink. What's that right there? What do you got? Is that cranberry juice? Uh, this is like a pomegranate and something else. Oh, fruity. fruity. Yeah, the first one was, uh, <laughs> the first first one was chocolate the, almond. I was going to say, this is the first, uh, this is the first um, time we've seen such a drink on the, on, on the podcast. On. I'm going to go can you chug it? <laughs> Not fast enough. That's weak. Come on. Horse chugging skills. Comments, take care of him. Just bash him. Anyone still watching? We want to hear it. Chugging skills, <laughs> three out of ten. Excuse me. But, uh, yes. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you if you're still watching. Um, and we will uh, see you guys in the next one. And um, if you guys want to see some topics, any specific questions you have, drop them below as well. But otherwise, for these two fellows, James, Connor, and myself, take it easy, guys. Yeah. Peace.